Hi, this is a tutorial on how to install Android Nougat or Android 7 in VirtualBox. This can actually work across most OS's, for example, Linux, Mac, and Windows. Before we get started, don't forget to upvote and follow me. So, you're going to want to navigate to a website called android-x86.org. So you're, it's going to bring you here, and you're going to want to click download on the left hand side. Once you get to that page, you're going to want to click view for the Android 7.1 ISO. This is the this is the 64-bit version, but the 32-bit version was there as well, if your operating system supports that. So it's going to bring you to this website. There, um, This website actually take, took a little bit of time to load because there were a lot of ads. So I just gave it a second. And you can click these two links uh, over there that say the name of the download to start the download automatically. But... Um, now this is going to download, uh, I'm just going to wait for it to download. Um, actually, we are going to start up VirtualBox so that we can get everything set up for when the, uh, Android is, operating system is done downloading. So, go ahead and open it up. And once that's open, you're going to want to click, uh, New. And just ig ignore that. Click new. And name it whatever you want. Doesn't really matter. And so the type for it is going to be Linux. And just checking where that is. No, it's not going to be other Linux. It's going to be Linux 2.6, like that version right there. It's either 64 bit or 32 bit. So if we. Um, if we uh, go back to the download, it's going to say it's underscore 64, and that means we're 64 bits. So change it depending on whatever. Um, just set this to whatever you want. I'm just going to go with 2 gigabytes. So uh, there we go. And you're going to want to create a virtual hard disk. Um, don't choose any of these other options. Um, click create. And make sure it's VDI, virtual disk image. Make sure it's dynamically allocated. It's probably best to stick with that. Um, keep, I would recommend keeping the size at 8 gigabytes. Um, okay, so now we're ready. And you're going to want to see where it says optical drive empty. Click on it. And click choose disk image. Navigate to where you had downloaded your Android ISO. And see right there. Click open. And now we're ready to go. So we're going to click start. And it's going to go through all this. Click on installation. It's going to do this. So now here's the tricky part. Follow my steps exactly. So you're going to want to go to create or modify partitions. Click no for GD GPT. Click new. Click primary. And then press enter. Um, press enter for bootable because this is very important if we're running Android. Now we're going to go down to write because and this is safe because there's nothing else on the hard drive. So click yes. So type in type it in actually. It's gonna write partition table to disk. This might take a while depending on your PC. Okay, mine's done. Um. Now just make sure everything is good and go all the way down to quit when you're ready. Now click, see how it's already hovered our partition? So with the partition hovered, you're going to want to just double check that it says virtual VBox hard disk um, and click OK. Now go, you want to format it for EXT4 and make sure you click yes. It's going to format the partition and it's going to ask us if we want to install grub and click yes. That's important. And it's going to ask us if we want to install that as read write and you're going to want to go to yes again. Now it's going to install and I'll be right back.
Okay, now that it's done installing, it's gonna go through a few dialogues, syncing to disk, for example. And once that's done, it's gonna ask us if we want to reboot. And we do want to reboot, so go to reboot and click OK, and it's gonna reboot. This is important. Um, it's gonna reboot back to the first screen you saw. Oops, click the wrong button. So you're gonna to wanna to click the X and power off the machine. This is important here. Go to IDD and click remove disk from virtual drive, the thing that we put in the beginning, and now click start. Because everything got installed onto the android.vdi, if you see under that. So this might take a little bit of time because it's its first run. And so this is important. Oh, you get a few dialogues. Make sure you click that. Don't click any of the debug stuff because it might act weird. So it's going to go through a few commands. And you're going to find yourself at this screen. It's going to be an Android splash screen. And this might be there for a while, depending on the performance of your computer. But eventually it will finish, so give it a second. Okay, so it's finished for me. It was actually relatively quick. Um, and now you're going to see, you're going to start to see some familiar Android logos. And right now you're just going to want to make sure the mouse settings are configured and everything. And once they're uh, configured, just continue with the setup as you normally would if you just got a phone. So. This might actually take a long time, but. For me, it didn't really take that long. So if you don't want to sign in, just skip. So I'm going to click all set because I don't want to add my email account or on body detection. So after it adds the finishing touches, you're going to be presented with this. So you're going to want to click on launcher three or launcher, whatever you see there. And you're going to want to either you want to click always. I click just once because I could be using this for other purposes, but click always. And then you're going to be here. And you have now have a fully functional Android operating system on your Windows or Mac or Linux. Um, so I played around with it for a bit. And after um, just configuring everything, I wanted, I powered down the machine. And now we're gonna configure some performance settings. So we're gonna go to settings. And we're gonna go to display and make sure you enable 3D acceleration because this will um, speed up the uh, virtual machine. Uh, you can edit any of these settings, but these are my settings. And I went to system and make sure you have um, that on default and these two options ticked. That's very important because that will speed it up. Um, it's probably best if you have this at two CPUs. Don't change anything else. Uh, you can actually change the memory to whatever you want, but I keep it at two gigabytes. And that's it. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to follow and upvote.